serving God, who was called. I think that's very important. She was called into this ministry, into this like time in our lives, in this season. I'm real big about the season because it's important to be in the right season. And we thank you that she's an obedient servant of the kingdom of God. Yes. That alone is weighty and very, very important. Uh, she has a doctrine and theology. She is uh, uh, served as a pastor. She's an author and she has five books. She has a pastor's heart for ministry of women, the ministry of women. She has a heart for uh, deliverance. Uh, she is a teacher from the heart. I believe she was born a teacher. <laughs> she came out, she, she was teaching. <laughs> and she was serving and sharing. And we are just so blessed to have her today. And uh, we anticipate the message that you have for us, Apostle. And we know this is going to be a blessing. It's going to be added to us uh, and a thousandfold. A thousand fold. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. We welcome you. Apostle Gemma Valentine.
the hidden dangers of sex without marriage. And the course title is Sex, a Weapon of Satan Against the Church. Amen? Amen. When you are teaching a lesson like that, especially with us putting it up on YouTube, you have to identify the people that you're speaking to. Amen. Because sometimes unsafe people, they want to argue with you, and you are not speaking to them. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 So we have to identify who the Lord is speaking to. Um, in First Peter two and nine, it says, "But ye are a chosen generation, yeah. 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 a royal priesthood, yeah. a holy nation." and a peculiar people, Amen. that he should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Yes. That's who I'm talking to. Amen. Let's bless the Lord right now. Father, we just thank you. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. We ask the preacher to step up and to step forth, the teacher to do the teaching, breathe upon us and let the inspiration of the Holy Ghost come, let enlightenment, revelation, let truth and wisdom come forth in the name of Jesus. Remove those things, O oh God, that are blockages in our lives. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear, mighty God. Yeah. Yeah. We are people that are preparing ourselves for the coming of the Lord. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you. We want to hear well done. Yeah, man. The good and faithful yeah. servant yeah. enter into the joy of the Lord. Yeah. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 We pray, God, that everything you say will be pleasing in your sight yeah. and that we will speak truth. We will speak the truth in love, in the name of Jesus. So bless your people, those that are way in touch, yes. those that are here, God. Keep your mighty yes. hands strong yes. upon their lives. Yes. We thank you for them, in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus. Amen. 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 And amen. Praise God. So this scripture, 1 Peter 2 and 9, tells us who we are. We refer to the body of Christ. Yeah. When he said E-R, it is referring to the body of Christ. A people born of the will of God yeah. and set apart by the blood of Jesus unto righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. And, and we are earth dwellers, a universal and diverse people that love God, that serve in the kingdom of God, yet we are diverse, are of diverse languages, cultures, ethnicities from different geographical regions and belong to different religious affiliations, but we are joined to Christ and we are one in the spirit. Amen. 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 We are citizens of heaven. We have dual citizenship in earth and in heaven. And as sons of God, we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We are a holy nation. We have a constitution. We have laws, statutes, precepts, and commandments that govern our life. Amen. According to Psalm 19. We are the light of the world the salt of the earth. We are sealed by the Holy Spirit and having the seal, the Bible said, God knows them that are His. The seal is our identification mark. Amen. You cannot see the seal with the natural eye, but in the spirit, in the realm of the spirit, we are identified and acknowledged that we belong to God. Amen. We are the church of Jesus Christ. And Jesus is going to present the church to his Father without spot or blemish, without sin. And the only way this can be done is by the washing of the water of the world. Amen. 
And as the agency of the kingdom, we must teach and preach the righteousness and holy standards of the kingdom of God. The counsel and the warning to the church is this. Without holiness, no man shall see God. Mm. Right? Amen. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Amen. That goes for ministers too. Amen. 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 Without holiness, no man, that includes women too, Amen. shall see God. You know, when God gave me this assignment, I was puzzled and hesitant at first. And I said, Lord, this sin is so prevalent in your house. From the pulpit to the pew, and it is so much a part of the nation's culture. I don't know if people will receive this. Well, of course, God is no respect of those. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And he said to me whether they receive it or not. Mm. All right. Whether they choose to live a holy life or not, mm -hmm. those that practice immorality in his house and those that support them that are involved in this lifestyle, mm -hmm. this world will be a witness against them in the day of judgment. Mm -hmm. wow. uh, when a person comes against the word of God, they are coming against the deity of God. And when they come against the deity of God, they are coming against the throne of God. Yes. And when they come against the throne of God, they are coming against the highest level of authority in the universe. Yes. Amen. Because his kingdom rules over all. Amen. 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 In other words, God is in charge. Amen. Amen. And I'm sending this word out to the kingdom of God, to the church of God, to every Christian, to everyone that named the name of Christ. Amen. And God is not playing with this. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. Let's begin our lesson with this text, Hebrews 13, 4. It says, marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. But for mongers and adulterers, God will judge. Mm. Now there are two institutions that God ordained for man. One is the institution of marriage, and the second institution is the church. An institution is an established organization. And everything God establishes has foundation. It has foundations, laws. The laws are to maintain order. Amen. God wants order in our lives. He wants order in the church. He wants order in the kingdom. He wants order in the universe. Now there's a natural side and a spiritual side to these two institutions. Marriage is natural because it involves the physical body of two people being joined together in covenant and becoming one flesh before God. Marriage is spiritual because our born again spiritual man is joined to Christ and we are one with Christ. So you're one in the flesh with your partner, but you're one with Christ in the spirit. And one day there will be the marriage celebration in heaven. The Bible says the marriage of the Lamb is come, and the bride has made herself ready. Amen. Amen. Now why the institution of marriage? It was in the mind of God that the family unit will be a holy union. A male and female built upon the sacredness of a covenant and the law of agreement. And the family would be the foundation of society. That was in the mind of God. Amen? Amen. It was within the confines of this honorable institution that a man and woman would procreate 
for the generations to come. Amen. Amen. That's what God had in mind. When God said it was not good for the man to be alone, it was not loneliness God was referring to. God was referring to the fact that there was no other species of his kind for Adam to fellowship with in the earth. God meant that man could not procreate by himself. His body was not designed with a womb which he needed to carry a fetus. Therefore, God designed a suitable companion for the man to incubate his seed. He created the woman. Amen. The woman would help him to be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. Therefore, God made them male and female. Amen. Amen. The female or the woman, as Adam called her, was a suitable companion for the man. And when God brought the woman to Adam, he declared, This is not bone of my bone, mm -hmm. flesh of my flesh. Then the man put an important precept into place. He was the first father, the first husband, the first man. Mm -hmm. And he put a very important precept into place. He said, Therefore, shall a man leave his father and his mother mm -hmm. and cleave to his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Mm -hmm. As men began to multiply in the face of the earth, and children were born to them, the DNA of the family of man was corrupted by fallen angels who began to have relationships with women. And for the first time in Genesis 6, we began to hear about spirit beings procreating with humans. In Genesis 6, 1, it says, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were attractive and they took as their wives any they choose. Mm. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. I want you to see that scenario. Amen. Amen. Now spirits don't have a flesh body. Amen. They have terrestrial bodies, they have celestial bodies. So these fallen angels, which are devils, became spirit husbands. And their human wives gave, gave birth to children which, were, which the Bible called Nephilim, mm -hmm. a race of giants or demigods, part human and part devil. These children were so evil so wicked that the earth was filled with violence and God regretted that he made man. And so God destroyed the earth and that generation with a flood. Now this practice of devil sleeping with women did not stop because God destroyed the earth with a flood. Because spirits do not die. Mm. This practice still goes on today in many societies. And in the church, there are women that have been attacked by these spirit husbands and men that have been attacked by these spirit wives. They are called incubus and succubus. Succubus is a demon in female form and incubus is a demon in male form. They attack you while you're sleeping you have dreams of having sex with people you are familiar with, but in reality, these spirits take on the image of a person familiar to you so that you will accept what is going on. Mm -hmm. wow. Then there are people that are married in the spirit realm. Mm -hmm. And if perchance chance you have had a dream where you are getting married, and you are already married in the natural, the spirit spouse will not allow you and your natural spouse to live happily ever after. They will always be fighting and fussing over the most insignificant things because the spirit husband or spirit wife 
does not want your natural marriage to last. Mm. Mm. Come on. You can go to counselor after counselor about your marriage. If a spirit wife or a spirit husband is involved, your marriage will not last. Marriage counselors don't take into the, uh, the spiritual aspects of people's relationship. They think because two people are Christians that they are supposed to get along. But that is not always the case. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. What a person brings into the relationship, whether it is spiritual, emotional, financial, social, all the baggage you brought into the marriage will affect the relationship. Mm. Amen? Amen? You cannot counsel spirits. Mm. You have to cast them out. Amen. Amen? Amen? Another point is a person can have multiple spirit wives. Yes and multiple husbands based on the fact that they have had a promiscuous lifestyle because marriage is physical and it is spiritual. Mm -hmm. Come on. Now this young lady I know had a dream and in the dream the angel took her into a building and into a room. In that room was sitting all the men she had slept with even though they were still alive on the earth. Mm -hmm. Their spirits were in this room. Mm -hmm. And the angel took into this, this room. And these men, they were with, their spirit was going to stay there until they die. Mm -hmm. And the only way they will get out of that room is if they accepted Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now she was saved. These men were not saved. But their spirits were turned in this place, waiting on death before they go to hell. Mm -hmm. The angel of the Lord showed her that. I was at a revival when a young lady went up for prayer. The speaker was a well-known prophet among the Christian community. And as the young lady went forward for prayer, he said to her, much sin, much, 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 much sin. What he saw around her was spirits, because she was a, a, a fornicator, she was living a very promiscuous life. Mm -hmm. And he saw all these spirits around her, and he says, much sin. That's why they are around you, much sin. Amen? Amen. Uh, you know, people don't take, uh, they don't understand the dynamics of the spirit realm. The spirit realm is more real than the natural realm. Amen. 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 John 8, 3, and the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. What says thou? In verse 7, so when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Mm -hmm. That woman was Mary Magdalene, mm -hmm. who had a reputation in the city for being a sinner because she was a prostitute. Mm -hmm. In Luke 7 37, behold, a woman in the city, this is referring to Mary, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat and meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet behind him weeping, and began to wash his feet and wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisees which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman it is that touched him, for she is a sinner. But then we see Mary here in this scenario, wiping, crying, anointing Jesus' feet, wiping it in the hair. Why was Mary so appreciative and thankful to Jesus? It tells us in Mark 69, now when Jesus was risen early, the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. Mm. That is why she was living that type of life. Mm. Amen? Mm -hmm. 
Until she met Jesus, she was a known sinner in the community. Amen? Amen. But Jesus had to cast those devils out of her. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen. Um, you know, like, like, we don't know why people live and behave the way they do. Yes, Amen? Yes. Amen. And there are a lot of people that they are in that same condition as Mary Magdalene, but they cannot help themselves. Mm -hmm. They are caught up in this lifestyle of immorality because they are driven by an assortment of devils. Yes. And many of them are in church. Yes. Amen. 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 Church. Yes. Amen. Yes. And, um, we in church, all of us are guilty. We don't have an appetite for deliverance mm -hmm. because we don't want to be bothered with that. So people come to church one way and they mm. go back out the same way. Yes. Amen? Come on, come on. Um, adultery, fornication, idolatry causes God's wrath to fall upon his people. Mm -hmm. Now there's a story in the Bible about a false prophet who was summoned by the king of Moab to curse Israel. The false prophet was a sorcerer. Mm -hmm. God told the false prophet he could not curse Israel. The false prophet still tried and he tried because the king promised him great rewards and he wanted the rewards of divination. Mm -hmm. Each time he tried to curse Israel, God made him speak a blessing over Israel. But being an agent of the devil, he came up with a scheme and gave the king of Moab a strategy to get God to curse Israel himself. And that's what the enemy does. He, he will, this, the agents of, of, of the devil, they will read the Bible to see what makes God upset with his people. Mm -hmm. And then they will come and tempt you to do that thing mm -hmm. so that God will get mad at you. Wow. Mm -hmm. Amen? That's the strategy. Now look at the story in Numbers 22 and 4. And Moab said to the children of Midian, now shall this company lick up all that are wronged about us, as the ox licked up the grass of the field. And Balak, the son of Zippor, was king of the Moabites at this time. He sent unto Balaam, the son of Beor, to Pethor, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, messengers to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out from Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against me. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me, this people, for they are too mighty for me. For adventure I shall prevail, that we might smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land. For I know that whom you, you bless is blessed, and whom you curse is cursed. And in verse 9, God came unto Balaam and said, what men are these with thee? And Balaam said unto God, Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, had sent unto me, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt, which covered the face of the earth. Come now, curse me then. For adventure I shall be able to overcome them and drive them out. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. Amen. Now the children of God are protected by God from divination, witchcraft, and curses. Mm -hmm. Balaam tried and tried to curse Israel, but each time he tried, he ended up blessing the people of God. Mm -hmm. He eventually said, surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, mm -hmm. neither is there any divination against Israel. Mm -hmm. Amen? Finally, the false prophet revealed to the king of Moab a strategy that will cause God to be angry with Israel and that God will do the cursing and God will punish Israel. 
The devil knows what God hates. Mm -hmm. So, we have to understand as children of God, the main assignment that Satan gives Satan is who wants more power to move up the ranks in the kingdom of darkness is to attack a local church, attack the pastor, attack the pastor's family. Another strategy is to plant agents in the house of God. Mm. He wants to shut down every local church so that his territorial spirits can rule over that community unhindered by the prayers of the believers. Mm. He authorizes women to, to seduce the pastor so he will be caught in adultery. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. He sends spirits of confusion and division to the home of the pastor to cause problems mm -hmm. so that the relationship could end. He sends demons to capture the minds of the pastor's children so they will be rebellious and stray from God. Mm -hmm. There's always a strategy because the Bible said you smite the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Let me say this, if, if all of you, if, if all you do when you are in a local church, if all you do is criticize mm. the local church, criticize the pastor, you will not support the work of the local church. You're causing confusion. You will not pray for the pastor, for the local church. Then you are on assignment by the kingdom of God. Come on. Amen. 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 You don't even know it. Come on. Ooh, Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Satan is using mm. you yeah. Yeah. Mm. with all that negative talk. Mm. Yeah. With all that bad attitude. Mm. And you don't even know that you are on assignment by the kingdom of God. Yes. If you don't like what's going on in the local church, leave. Mm. Amen. 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 Don't stay there and end up in hell. Amen. Wow. Amen. Because that's where you're going to go. God is very, very particular about the bride of Christ. Mm. Mm. Yes. Amen. Amen. Let's look at the covenant God made with Israel. Exodus 23 to 5. It says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or in the earth beneath or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow thyself to them nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth 